Okay, today we have a quick video. I want to talk about CSS sibling selectors. Now there's two in particular, the general and the adjacent sibling selectors. There are minor differences between the two, but they are important when it comes to applying the CSS. So I'm going to talk about the two and then I'm going to give some practical examples of usage of the two different ones. Okay, I have a page here. Let's jump into VS Code. Two sections. One where I'm going to put the general stuff, one where I'm going to put the adjacent stuff. In the CSS file that's attached, I've got a section for general, and I've got another section down here for all the adjacent stuff. So I've got two examples with each. For the general sibling selector, or combinator, if you want to get technical, this applies to any time that you want to style a sibling of an element. So what is a sibling? Well, right here, these two section elements are siblings to each other. They have the same parent. So just like in real life, if you've got a sibling, you both share the same parent. So two sections inside of there, I've got a div with the class card and a button. These things are siblings, this div, these paragraphs are siblings. And I'm gonna do some stuff inside of the card and I'm gonna do some other stuff with the button and these paragraphs. This general sibling selector says that if you have a sibling that follows whatever it is you're targeting first, here I've got the card, this is the thing that I could be targeting, and then I'm going to say my dot card followed by the tilde character, and whatever I put here, if it's a sibling of anything with the class card, and even if there's something in between, so I could target these paragraphs down here, even though there's a button and a div in between this card class and these paragraphs, even though there's something in between them, it's still going to work. So that's the general sibling selector. There can be things in between as long as they're siblings and the second thing that you write comes after it. With the adjacent, same sort of idea, you've got siblings and the one that you write after it, so if I did plus inside here, we get the UL. The thing that comes after it is the form. So if I did this, I'm specifically talking about a form that comes immediately after the UL. And that's what makes it the adjacent sibling. So it has to come right after. Okay, so let's jump back to the general ones. I'll give you a couple of examples with those. What I'm going to do inside of here with the general section, with the general sibling selector, inside my card class, I have here a heading section that's got an H2 and an H3. There's an image section and then a content section that has an H2 as well. So there's H2s in both places here. This one's got paragraphs. There could be two, there could be three, there could be a dozen, but there's paragraphs that come after the H2, and up inside the head, I've got an H3 that comes after it. So just looking at this, here's the heading section. There's an H3 after the H2, and inside the content area, we have two paragraphs coming after the H2. I can, with the general sibling selector, target anything that comes after any H2. So let's jump back and do that. Right here, we've got card H2, and then I'm saying with the asterisk, this is the general selector, uh, sorry, the universal selector. This is any element that is a sibling and comes after an H2. Doesn't matter how many things are in between it. If it's a sibling, this style is going to apply. So I'll do this, uncomment it, and I'm saying that anything that comes after an H2 if it's inside the card, it's going to be this medium gray color. It's going to be a smaller font and a lighter font weight. And there we go. So the H3 and both of the paragraphs. And if I added another paragraph into the HTML, there's a third paragraph. It applies as well because these are all siblings that come after this H2. This is a sibling that comes after the H2. So the styles apply in both cases. So there's one. We can also use the general sibling selector with things like pseudo classes. And what does that mean? 
Well, right here. Things like focus, active, before, after. Those are pseudo elements, but same sort of idea. Um, in a form, when you're talking about things that are checked or things that are required. So those are the pseudo classes. I'm going to say with my button right here, I've got a button with the class BTN and the class BTN toggle. So I'm targeting the tar toggle thing and I'm saying, if it's focused on, I'm going to change the background color to this light green. So when I click, this is light green. I click away. Anytime it's got focus, it's going to have that light green background color. Here, I'm going to target any paragraphs that are siblings of this button are going to have all of these applied. So it's going to be a light coral color, italic, smaller font, different line height, all these things. And we've got a div followed by two paragraphs here. All three things are siblings of this button, but in my CSS, I'm only saying paragraphs that are siblings of the button and only if the button is in focus. So when I toggle these two paragraphs, but not the div, get styled. I click away, it goes away. So there's two examples with the general sibling selector, knowing that we can have things that are in between. With the adjacent, this one's a fairly common one. If I wanted to put borders in between these list items, so right in between the first and second, second and third, third and fourth, fourth and fifth, but not at the bottom and not at the top. Well, if I apply the border bottom to all of them, I'm going to not put it on the top, but I will have it on the bottom. Conversely, if I put the border on the top of all of them, it'll include the first one. And that's where our child, or uh, sorry, our adjacent sibling selector comes into play. I can do this, li plus li. This is going to mean any li element, any list element that comes after another list element. Well, that's going to apply to all of them except for the first. This first one does not come after another one. So I can now target all of those list items like this and put the borders in between all of them. But I don't have one on the top. I don't have one on the bottom. And I did red just to make it stand out. I wouldn't typically use red. We could put something else in there. We could say, okay, uh, let's do uh, medium gray for this. There we go. So it's a way to apply styles that are in between all these elements. Same sort of idea when you've got um, a horizontal list of anchors. If you wanted to put something in between each of them, we can use the adjacent sibling selector to do that. And one last example with the adjacent one, there's going to be times in your forms where you've got the label at the front and other times where the label comes after. So with checkboxes, radio buttons, you tend to put the label after it, but with the inputs and selects and text areas, the label comes on the other side. We can use the adjacent to apply different styling depending on the location. So we can say, style the label in a way if it comes after an input, or if the input comes after the label, we're going to be putting margins of different values and in different places. And there it is. So I'm creating a label on, or sorry, a margin on the left of the input, or I'm creating a margin on the left of the label, depending on what order these elements come in. And that's all down to the adjacent sibling selector. All right, so I hope that helps you out. If you want a copy of this code, uh, down in the description, there's a link to the code gist that has these two files. And as always, thanks for watching.